The other day, while browsing some of my favorite streetwear brands, I came across this sick vintage-inspired design from Rude. It had this gritty, retro aesthetic, a bold desert chrome text, and this wealth energy that really stood out. It got me thinking, what if we create our own version? A design that blends that pro streetwear vibe with a high quality metallic finish. So in this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a halftone glow effect in a desert chrome text effect in Photoshop using a powerful action. And that's not all. If you're into DTF printing, this technique is perfect for making bold, eye-catching prints that pop on any fabric. Let's jump in. Before we jump into Photoshop, we need some assets to bring our design to life. First, the image. I want something that feels untamed, wild, and powerful, just like the leopard in the rude design. So I'm heading over to Midjourney to generate a high contrast, artistic version of a leopard that fits the aesthetic. Next, we need the right font, something bold, clean, and slightly vintage. For this, I'm using Calistoga font, which has that classic streetwear energy. Lastly, inspired by the leopard's bold nature, I'm adding the tagline savage to symbolize strength, style, and confidence. Before we start, let's make sure all the essential files are imported into Photoshop. We'll need the chrome effect action, halftone glow effect action, pattern file, and gradient file. Once these are loaded, you'll find them in their respective panels ready to use. For the document setup, I recommend a 16 by 20 inch canvas at 300 DPI to ensure high quality results, especially for DTF printing. Now let's type our text. For this tutorial, we'll be working with the font we showcased earlier. Once that's set, we'll head over to the actions panel where all our imported actions are listed. The first dialog box that appears will let us choose the bevel size for our chrome effect. You can adjust the size freely based on your preference. For this tutorial, I'll go with this size, then press OK to continue. Next, a dialog box will appear where we can select the horizon pattern. This is where the pattern file we imported earlier comes into play. In this step, we'll be in the pattern fill section where you can choose the horizon pattern you want. You can also adjust the size to your liking and reposition it by simply clicking and dragging on the canvas. The great thing about this pattern is that it's seamless, so it blends perfectly. For now, I'll select this pattern and proceed to the next step. After that, you'll see the layer style dialog box. Here, just click and drag across the canvas until you see a red line appear on the text. Once the red line is visible, drag it above the peak of the horizon to ensure that no red is showing in the final design. Once you're happy with the placement, press OK. Now it's time to choose the base color gradient for our chrome effect. This is where our imported gradient file comes in. When the gradient map dialog box appears, click on the gradient bar and scroll down to see the imported gradients. You can select any color combination you like, but for this tutorial, I'll go with this one, then press OK. Next, another dialog box will appear for fine-tuning the gradient color. Here, you can adjust the gradient overlay style, which controls how the bevel reflects light. Feel free to experiment with the opacity and scale settings to achieve the look you want. You can also reposition the reflection by clicking and dragging on the canvas for extra style. Once satisfied, press OK. Now we'll apply the gradient color to the bevel. This affects the sides of the letters. The process is exactly the same as setting up the base gradient. Simply choose a color from the imported gradients, and if needed, adjust it to match your design. For this tutorial, I'll use this color, then press OK. And just like that, our chrome effect is complete. But you can always take it a step further by experimenting with different fonts and color combinations. This will help to explore various styles and achieve unique results that suit your design preferences. For the next phase, as you can see, this is the image we selected earlier in mid-journey. Before pairing it with our chrome design, we will first apply a halftone glow effect to enhance its power on look and make it length seamlessly. And here's a quick demo on how to achieve the halftone glow effect. 
First, we have an image here. Let's duplicate it and set its resolution to 300. Next, we'll convert it to halftone. Duplicate it as a new document, then go to image, then mode and convert it to grayscale. After that, we can adjust the levels. Once that's done, go back to image and convert it to bitmap. Flatten it and make sure the resolution is still set to 300. For the shape, select round. You can experiment with the angle and frequency. Remember, the lower the frequency number, the bigger the dots will be. For this video, let's set it to 15. Now select all, then go back to the original document. At the bottom of the layer panel, click Add Layer Mask. Hold the Alt key and click on the layer thumbnail, then paste the halftone image. Finally, add a background to see the result. Next, let's add a glow effect. Duplicate the current layer, go to Blending Options and check Outer Glow. You can experiment with the settings here, like the color and size. Just make sure the opacity is set to 100% so the glow is visible. Do the same for inner glow to complete the effect. Next, let's half tone the image again. Start by duplicating the current layer, then rasterize it. For now, hide the other layers so we can focus on the result better. After that, go to layer, then layer mask, then select from transparency. Then select all and copy it. Next, go to File, and then New, and choose New Clipboard to create a new document. In the new clipboard, just paste the copied content. Now we have a black and white image. Like earlier, convert it to grayscale and then to bitmap. Once you're happy with the settings, copy the result and go back to the original document. Paste it onto the mask thumbnail of the current layer. Next, create a new layer and fill it with any color of your choice. Clip this new layer to the layer below it, then move it under the hidden layers. At this point, you can either delete or hide the layer with the glow effect we made earlier. If you want, you can also change the glow color using hue and saturation. And that's it our final output. Save it as a PNG or PDF. Just make sure to remove the background as this design is transparent. This works perfectly for DTF printing purposes. And to show you how the action bundle works, here's a quick demo using the actions. You'll see just how much faster and easier it is compared to doing the entire lengthy process by hand. This really helps speed up your workflow and makes everything so much more efficient. After applying the halftone glow effect, you will see the transformation. This effect adds depth and texture, giving the design that gritty high contrast vintage streetwear look. Now let's finalize everything by combining our enhanced image with the chrome design. Proper alignment and scaling are key to making sure the elements work together seamlessly. For an extra vintage touch, try adding noise or grain for a worn out look, along with some slight sparkly elements to enhance the retro streetwear vibe. And here's the final result, a bold high-end streetwear vintage design, perfect for detail printing or any custom design project. If you found this tutorial helpful, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss a new tip. Want more? Click the link and unlock something awesome. Visit us at transfersuperstars.com, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.